Brad. At E3 a couple years ago, Microsoft debuted a game called Recall, which had me rather excited. It's got a cool female protagonist, yay. A robot dog companion, yay. All the makings of a very awesome game. And yet, with this setup, I feel like you're about to say it's not an awesome game. It is an awesome game. I can't read faces. Oh, come on! Ow! Dang it! Well, I guess we'll have to do this the hard way. Gotcha! Recall throws you into the future after a brief message tells you that some plague has ravaged Earth and now you're on a planet called Far Eden. Although I feel like desert wasteland is not exactly what I think of when I think of the word Eden. No, not at all. And I don't know if it's just become cool to be super minimalist with like context and setup, but it doesn't really give you much to go on here. I understand that this creates some mystery and the story unfolds on your journey, but personally I need something more to actually care about what I'm doing. In this you play Jewel. Kai Bren, core maintenance. Jewel Adams, atmospherics. What we do eventually discover is that Jewel is under instruction from her scientist father, played by acclaimed musician and vegetarian Moby. Is it actually Moby? No, to clarify, all bald people to me look exactly like Moby. But Jewel needs to find out what went wrong with this plan to terraform Far Eden into a place that makes it habitable for Earth's plaguey population. Plaguey Moby? I blame Moby. Don't we all? Yeah. I reckon that shit music is what killed everybody. There are also robots everywhere, which were supposed to be for maintenance, but have now taken on the new task of death to all humans. So off you go into the desert, facing off against all manner of mechanical beasts. But Jewel has her own mechanical beast, a robot dog by the name of Mac. Mac is pretty cool because he can help you out in combat and dig for stuff when the game tells you to. Eventually, you do unlock other companions as well, like Seth. A mechanical spider who helps you climb and flings you around some pretty crazy platforming sections. We made it. But Mac is the best because Mac is a dog and dogs are awesome. Yes, that's true. Any game can be improved with a dog companion. And as you travel and scavenge, you'll unlock different parts to upgrade him and your other Corbot companions. <laughs> Recall is set in an overworld which connects you to different zones, but your range is quite limited as everything needs to be unlocked. Which is a shame because I just wanted to explore the world more. Yeah, the world and the whole game really had so much potential. Earlier this year at E3, TV's Bajo got to speak to Recall's lead writer, ex-Bungie dev Joseph Staten, and he had this to say. Writing Recall has been a really fun uh, change of pace for me in the kind of games that I usually write. The charm and fun of the game is that combination of the robots, the core bots that you choose to be with you, and the different things that you can do with them. We're working with Keiji Nobune-san of Mega Man fame and the guys at Armature who are the leads on Metroid Prime. So if you know those two games and you smash them together, you get a hopefully really charming, fun action platformer called ReCore. It's an interesting concept, a unique setting, and an intriguing character, but I want to know more about her. But you almost immediately settle into this hypnotic zone of just battling robots and retrieving power cores to unlock doors. And that's how I'd sum this game up in a nutshell. I'd also sum this game up in a nutshell by saying PlayStation 2, because it feels like a game completely out of time. It's got platforming and shooting and racking up combos, but after the first few hours, that fun starts to become monotonous. And it kind of just blands out. Yeah, the combat's pretty uninspired. You have a weapon which you can charge with ammo, and you need to color code this to enemies that you're fighting for maximum effect. This requires a bit of juggling when facing off against multiple opponents who will change color mid-fight. But that just mainly feels gimmicky. Yeah, totally. Your main aim in every fight is to get the enemy's health low enough that you trigger a quick time finisher. This rips the power core out, keeping it intact for you to use later for crafting. Because if there's one thing I love, it's keeping the organs of my enemies. And it's pretty easy to get those organs because the game has an auto-targeting mechanic that at times makes the game just feel like it's kind of an on-rails light gun shooter. Especially when you're facing off against these mechanical flies or caterpillar-like robots where you just have to spam bullets at every section. Let us have 
You do have a shield break option to make use of as well, but after a while this all just feels like a total slog. Even the boss fights are repetitive, it's just about getting them cores. Mm. Although the cores that really matter are the prismatic ones. These are the ones that open the doors to the rest of the map. Only some doors require more than one core, or some need hidden core bots. So it becomes a game about collecting all the cores to open all the doors. And even though that rhymes, I hate it. It feels like lazy game design, and I wanted this game to be more. Yeah, it's really disappointing. But on the positive side, I do like the way the game looks. It has a real sort of Star Wars Force Awakens vibe to it. Yeah, I really loved the setting. And I also really like the way that Jewel moves as well. She uses jumps and double jumps and air dashes and it makes navigating the environment super fun. I think those moments of aerial flying and occasional puzzle platforming were the most interesting bits in the game. Even if they were just in aid of collecting a bunch of little key things to open more doors. There's also a need to level up a certain amount before you can face the dungeons behind these doors, which results in more mindless, grindy robot shooting. What's behind door number one? It's more robots. more robots! This is just one of those games that has a really interesting concept, but they've just buried it under loads of collection quests and repetitious bloat and doors. And it becomes draining. And can we talk about the loading? Yes, we can. We reviewed this on Xbox One, and I thought Next Gen meant an end to long ass loading screens. But in this case, it's just a bigger world to load, so longer load times, it's terrible. Yeah, but it is incentive not to let Jewel die. Yeah, maybe we should have just stayed on Earth and let Moby kill us. Just close your eyes and say yes to Moby. What are you going to give it overall, Nick? Well, I really like the concept and the setting. I just wish they embraced it more than just window dressing. It feels like a really ambitious idea that's hampered by a fear of taking risks. So I'm going to give it a two. Hmm. I want to think that there's a great game in there somewhere. Mm. It's just locked behind about a gazillion doors. So I'm giving it two and a half. Come here, boy. Doesn't look too bad. <laughs> okay, okay.